Hi, this is Dalton with GeoMarvel, and today's tutorial we'll be diving into Experience Builder. We'll walk through starting your first Experience Builder app, how to add pages, widgets, and actions to create a dynamic user experience. Right from our ArcGIS Online account, we can hit the App Launcher dropdown and click the Experience Builder button. Now within Experience Builder, we can create a new project. From here, we have a variety of options. You can see out of the box, uh, these are types of experiences that you can start with. These are default templates. Uh, you can see a variety of options here from billboard, jewelry box, to gallery, to full scrolling pages. And Esri continues to come out with additional templates. Let's get started with just a blank scrolling page. So our first time in Experience Builder, we can navigate through the guided tour to learn a few tips and tricks and to learn the fundamentals of the layout here within the Experience Builder project. Now you can see we've got our blank screen app. So let's go ahead and give our experience a name. We'll call this Experience Builder Tutorial. And from the plus button here, you can see we have a list of widgets that we can add. Now, next tab down is the Pages tab. And here we can view our current pages and add additional pages. Here we have the option to pick from templates, just like we did at the beginning of our project. So let's give our page a name. And let's go ahead and rename our page one as well to the type of template that we used. And next tab down, we have the Add Data tab. From here, if we click the Add Data button, we have a variety of data types that we can add to our experience. So we can browse our own content and browse through each folder that our user has in our ArcGIS Online account. And we can also browse our groups, our entire organization, or available items on ArcGIS Online. Then we can even browse for Living Atlas content to add directly to our experience. You can also add web scenes or layers directly to your experience or you can add items via URL. So navigating back here, look, the next tab down is the theme tab. Let's go ahead and change our active page so we can get a better idea of what the theme changes could look like. But you can see Esri has a variety of themes offered out of the box, as well as an organization shared theme if you have set this up for your organization. Now, when we customize, we have the option to increase or decrease size of objects and if we go back to the page tab let's go ahead and add a widget to our blank scrolling page to add a widget we'll simply click and drag you can see here it's giving me a limited area to place it in that's because I have this within a row so let's get rid of that let's go back to our initial page view and let's just get a blank full page app We'll start with a blank canvas and won't have any pre-built rows to work around. And if we hit that make home page button, we can make this our default page. Now let's drag our map in again. As you can see this time, the page is allowing me to place the widget just about anywhere on the page. Now if we go back to our content tab, we can click select map, go ahead and add new data from the bottom button. And from here, we can navigate through our content and choose an appropriate web map for our experience. And we'll hit done to add the data. And the data has been added to our experience, but we still have to click the button to activate it to be our web map for this specific widget. And now I can continue to move the item around and you can see some menu options right up top here. So first we have the ability to move the widget around the page based on these options here. So snapping to top, center, uh, making full width or full height. So with the click of a button, we can quickly organize our widgets layout on the page. And on the right here, you can see the web map widget has a variety of tool options. So we can toggle each of these on or off. And for the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and just toggle everything on so we can see the full range of options within the, the map widget. And if we go to the style tab now, this is where we can, again, quickly adjust with a single click the layout of this widget. So here we can make it full screen. And we can also adjust the height and width of the widget directly from the style pane as well. 
We can adjust this on the top, bottom, left, and right. And once we have the widget in a location that we like, we can also adjust the rotation. So let's say you had some storytelling reason to rotate your map. This would be a great way to do that. As we scroll down, you can see we can add details like a border, for example, if we wanted to highlight the map. Here, let's just add a red border. We'll give it a thickness of 10 and we'll set it to be double lined. We can also adjust the border radius. So you can see as I edit the app, I can move it around the canvas, but if I click the live view button here, I will get to interact with my experience as an end user. So I'll be able to interact with the maps as the map rather than the widget on the canvas. And if I toggle live view off, then I'm back to editing my widget like usual. You can also choose to lock layout. So this will just freeze the widget in question and toggling that off, we can continue moving our map and situating it on our experience where we want. Now let's add another widget here. Let's choose something simple like a legend widget. So dragging that on the map, we can then select our data. So here we have two maps. You see it's pulling maps from our entire experience right now and all, all associated pages. So this is where the importance of giving your maps quality names comes in. So if I give this a name that I will recognize, I can pull that straight from my dropdown and know it's connected to the correct widget and map. Now I can situate this widget directly on top of another widget. And let's go ahead and add an additional widget here, a list widget. Now I, I, you can see how I can place this on the canvas or directly within the map widget itself. And I also have a variety of list types, whether they are horizontal or vertical in direction. Let's go ahead and choose this type. And I'm just going to adjust my widget layout on the experience. Now let's say we want to add a sidebar. So this is a layout element that we can add to our experience to organize our widgets. Let's go ahead and make this full size. And you can see now I can't actually click on my map or list widgets anymore. And that's just because my layout widget is ordered on top of the rest of my widgets. So if I click this button and go send to back, now my sidebar widget is ordered at the back of everything. So I can click on my list and map widgets more easily. Now let's also make the map widget full size and then send this to the back. This will let us have a full screen map by default and now a popover sidebar that we get to open and close. Now turning off live view. Now let's edit our list widget to show some details that are relevant to our map. Now on the list widget, I'll hit start after I've selected my layout and I'm going to select my data. So I'm going to choose data that's already part of my experience builder data set. And you can see I can interact here with the arrangement, the states, and the available tools for the list widget. For example, I can put in a search option to search by name of the boundaries within my web map. I can also turn on a sorting option to sort by 2018 total population, for example. And I can even add a filter option. So I can set a filter and add a new clause for example, saying the total population is at least a designated number here. So let's pick a unique value of 4201 and we'll hit OK. And this is now a toggle option to limit the data view within the list widget. And moving over to style, here's where we can adjust some of those same features we could for the web map. We can choose to keep it within the parent container, which is the sidebar. And we can change the background color as desired or leave it clear, as well as adding a border or box shadow. And double clicking in the box here, we can add dynamic content. So we can choose the name 
and we can type in, put a pipe in there and choose the total population attribute. And clicking off to the right, you can see our entire list is now dynamically populated with the name and total population of a given polygon on the web map. And we can organize our content a little bit. And then let's add a trigger. So every time a list item is chosen, we will zoom to and flash a border selection on the polygon that we've chosen in our list. So every time we click an item in our list, we will trigger an action that zooms to the map and flashes the border surrounding that particular polygon. We now zoom into the map and highlight the polygon in question. Thanks for tuning in to this Experience Builder tutorial where we walked through starting a new experience and navigated the user interface to build out a simple map-centric experience. If you enjoyed this video or have requests for topics you'd like to learn about next, feel free to leave a comment and let us know. We'd love to hear from you.